Hi, welcome to the Antiques, Art, and Valuable Show. My name is Bob Langer, and I'm here to bring you a show which hopefully you will find interesting, entertaining, and valuable. Now, we've been very fortunate to have some of our members uh, leave us with some items which they would like us to describe more fully as to what they are and provide a, a value judgment. I'd like to start with the silver dollars someone has left for us to look at and evaluate. Evaluating silver dollars is a specialty. Uh, condition means almost as, almost as much as the mintage for each coin. Uh, the, the value of the coins left for us, in my opinion, would bring around $1,500 at auction. The most valuable being the 1878 Carson City minted dollar, which in my opinion is uncirculated. Now how does one establish uncirculated to almost uncirculated to fine, extra fine, good, very good. Most of it is done with the feathers of the eagle in the background. If the feathers are rubbed out to a certain degree or if the breast of the eagle is rubbed out to a certain degree, it diminishes the condition and also the value of the coins. Four of these are uncirculated, but despite the fact they have some bag marks. Uh, that means that when they came out of the bag, or, let, me, let me back up a little bit. When these are minted, they're minted fresh and then placed into a bag by machine. When they were placed into the bag by machine, there was very slight damage to the face. Or, or the back, but someone dealing in coins would make that kind of determination. A good coin is really something that's a cull, C-U-L-L. -L. That means that it, it just has silver value. The silver value in all of these coins and all silver dollars are dependent upon the silver, uh, the, the dollar value of the silver at the time they are purchased. When silver was, was around $40 an ounce, each silver dollar had a value of around $35 or $36. When they're in this condition, the values get up exponentially. These are, four of these are in beautiful condition and would be of value to any, any collector. Now, with, with pennies and dimes and quarters, the valuations are different, but the study is the same. Uh, on certain quarters, they look in the front and they see if a leg is rubbed off. On a penny, they'll look at the back of the Lincoln Memorial to see the condition there. Uh, all coins are different. Gold is different. Uh, the, the condition of gold coins and the mintage could bring up values $10,000, dollars thousand dollars each. Uh, if it's a regular gold coin, you'll get the value of the coin plus a value for the date plus a value for the condition. Uh, one of our neighbors brought in this sculpture. At first glance, it's Greco-Roman because the figures are wearing togas. However, it is neither Greek nor Roman. It's, it's actually from Pakistan. When Alexander the Great went eastward in dominating the territories, he landed and stayed in Pakistan until he drank himself to death. Uh, he died in, in Pakistan. Uh, this is a Gandharan piece. It is from the first century BC to the first century AD, and this would have an auction value 
of eight to ten thousand dollars through a reliable auctioneer. I'm talking about New York auctioneer who knows about Gundaran art. If you call in one of these uh, one of these individuals uh, who places full page ads in many of the publications reaching us where they'll come in and buy everything. They may look at this and not know what it is, not even make an offer, or they may offer you $500 just to take a chance on what it is. But I'm sure that if you went into a Florida auctioneer with this, he would not know what it is. This is really a, a, a very special area of collecting. On the other hand, this is a, a beautiful bronze which I believe is Tibetan, probably Sino-Tibetan, from the 17th century. Uh, the iconography of the deer means tranquility and long life. Uh, this boy on an oxen is Ming Dynasty. It, it's late Ming Dynasty. It is probably late 17th century. Now, how does one know that it's Ming? Uh, why would someone come up like that and say, you know, it's Ming and this is Sino-Tibetan? Uh, it's because my specific area has always been in, uh, of interest to Asian art. And as a consequence, I could tell that this is Ming Dynasty. Just as a doctor could look at somebody and know that they, just by looking at them, they have hepatitis, or put on a stethoscope and know they have pneumonia. Uh, this at auction value, is probably three to five thousand dollars. Another one of our neighbors has brought in to Bica this work of art, and she wanted to know what the value was and how one can dispose of it. Now Unfortunately, this is not an oil. Uh, this is what's known to the trade as a gicle. It is done by computer. It shows brush marks on the canvas, but it is, it's, it's, it's not an oil. It's just, it's, a, it's, uh, it's very difficult to describe how it's made, but I know it's made by computer. The face is lovely. The signature on here of Gibson, the signature floats. But on all oils, when you see a signature, the signature would blend into the oil. It would not stand out. It's almost three-dimensional. Now, when we turn this work around, we find that the frame was done with modern-day staples and that the canvas is not a real canvas. It's, a, it's something on which uh, reproductions are made. So right off the bat, we can tell from the back and certainly the front that it does not have too much value, but it is a, it is a beautiful little work of art which would hang nicely in someone's home. Uh, I would venture to say that the frame is probably more valuable than the piece itself. I'd like to discuss a little bit about the full-page ads we see in our local newspapers. All of those ads are telling you that these people and or companies would like to come into your home and make you an offer on your valuables, whether it's gold, 
silver, antiques, anything which has a value. Now, they, they do come over and they do make offers, but keep in mind that when they buy, they turn them over quickly, either by themselves to dealers or they'll put them at, up at auction by themselves, knowing what they'll bring at auction, and they get commissions on both sides. If any of you have anything of value, and sooner or later all of us have to, or our families will be disposing of what we have, I would suggest you take photos of them and send the photos into some of the major auction houses to get a realistic value of what you have. And when you get those values, place the photos and the values in a binder so that at some future date, uh, you and your, and your family members will know what you have and what those values might bring. Keep also in mind that many of the values are increasing monthly and that, for example, with Chinese art, which I'll be discussing at, at a, uh, one of the future segments, Chinese art and antiques have gone up 10 times in the last two years. Uh, consequently, I myself would look forward to the opportunity of meeting with any of you, uh, should you have any items you'd like to bring in to be on display and receive our best value judgment. Thank you all for being here, and we look forward to seeing you again.